What should have taken two minutes was unmistakably clear in the matter of seconds. Two thick blue lines, a positive pregnancy test. Immediately, my life was derailed, and all my plans and visions I had had for my 20s and beyond completely shattered before me. It was amazing to me how the second that I found out I was pregnant, I felt that I became a mother. And while this wasn't exactly the timing or the way that I would have hoped, I decided to embrace it and that this might be a positive thing. As the weeks passed, I tried to do things to stay positive. At one point, I remember laying in my bed alone at night in the pitch black, and awkwardly I moved my hands to my lower abdomen, and I spoke out loud to this little life for me within me. I said to him or her, I love you, I want you, and I can't wait to meet you. And it was true. By the time my 12-week ultrasound came, I couldn't wait to see this little life up on the screen. The ultrasound technician pointed out the head, the body, the little buds that were forming arms and legs, and she referred to this as the gummy bear stage. Then she dug the wand further into my abdomen to the point where it kind of started to hurt, and she stopped talking. I moved my eyes from the screen onto her face, which had grown completely stoic. And then she looked at me and she simply said, I'm sorry, I tried, but I can't find the heartbeat. I was having what's called a miss miscarriage, when your body does not recognize that you're losing your baby. My body continued to change in preparation for this pregnancy, and it took a few weeks until everything kind of caught up to itself. It was in the bathroom of my home that I miscarried that baby and experienced the most excruciating and graphic pain I have ever experienced, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. On the other side of the pain, there was no joy like a normal birth. Instead, in my hand, I held the tiny little body that I had seen on the screen. That pain followed me in the days that passed and I couldn't rid myself of it. I tried whatever I could do to process and cope. I reached out to people around me. But the thing is, we're really awkward about death and things like miscarriage. People have good intentions, but they say things that actually are usually more hurtful. People said things to me like, well, it wasn't an intentional pregnancy anyways, or, you can just try again later. Most hurtful was me, to me was when people would diminish what I was going through by saying something like, at least you were only 12 weeks along. To me, it didn't matter. I felt like I had lost a part of myself that I would never get back. At this time, my dad was also re-diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer, and it wasn't looking too good. This pain that I felt like I couldn't share with other people, it caused me to just draw into myself and push those around me away from me. It drew a further wedge into an already failing relationship I was having with my boyfriend. We were trying to give it one last effort, and even though I felt like a corpse and I was just going through the motions of life, trying to get out of bed every day, we still were trying to go about our daily life. In one attempt to go out and have fun and be normal, we went out with a group of his friends whom I did not really know. Of course, we got into a huge fight and we ended up being separated. And I found myself at the top of a hotel building with some people I didn't know and didn't really feel comfortable with. I decided to listen to my gut and leave that room. I was waiting at the elevator when one of these men came out of the room and began to approach me. I kept pushing the elevator to go down, but the elevator wasn't coming. As the man got closer, I made a split-second decision that I didn't know at the time, but I would replay over and over again. I went to the door to the right, which was the stairwell, to make a quick escape, and that is where I was sexually assaulted. So you can imagine why, six weeks later, when I found out I was pregnant again, I wasn't exactly excited. 
I didn't tell anyone about the rape. Not my friends, not my family, not my boyfriend. Quite frankly, I didn't even admit it to myself. I was so paralyzed with the unknown and the fear of what the paternity of this child might be. I began to resent that life inside of me. I felt like I was incubating hopelessness and filth. And mostly I felt guilty for really just wanting that first baby and not feeling like I had grieved its death. My dad died, and at a time when I already felt like I was drowning in darkness, I now felt like bricks were fastened to my feet, and I was being held against my will at the ocean's floor with no sign of light in sight. I even contemplated ending my own life, but ultimately I kept coming back to not being able to rationalize also ending that helpless little life inside of me that didn't choose any of this. Since the birth of my child was only months away, I knew I needed to reach out for help. It was actually much harder than you might think. I looked all over town for the right counselor, but I never seemed to find the right fit or feel safe or comfortable. Everyone seemed really uncomfortable or maybe the situations were outside of their expertise. Mostly I just felt like I was too much. I would begin to scratch the surface, but I would see their discomfort visible on their face. It wasn't until a few days before my child was born that I met a wonderful counselor by the name of Danielle. And it was in her office that I was finally able to let everything go. I told her everything. I told her about the miscarriage, about the rape, about how I didn't know the paternity of my child, and that I wasn't even sure if I would be able to love him or her or accept them into my, this world. And then I looked up at her, and she didn't say anything. She just blankly stared at me, and I thought, great, once again, I'm too much for someone. But then she simply asked if she could cross the room. And she came over and she sat next to me on the couch. And she held my hand and then she hugged me and we just cried together for a really long time. By the time I left her office, everything wasn't fixed. I didn't have the answers, but I felt like I was ready to welcome this child into peace and acceptance. And on September 18th, 2014, my daughter, Juniper Aubrey, was born with a head full of dark hair and old soul eyes that stared right into my core. She fit perfectly into my arms, and I have loved her completely since the moment I met her. You would think that finding out the paternity of my daughter would help make sense of the world. I thought it would put the universe back in place or explain why some things have to happen in order for others to. But in fact, it didn't, and it still doesn't. Sometimes pain is simply pain and joy is joy, and joy cannot cancel that pain out. Sometimes things that happen cannot be weighed or measured or compared. The birth of my daughter did not take away the loss and grief I was having still over that first baby. And this beautiful relationship that was unfolding between her and I did not justify or explain why I had been raped. What I do know is that I want her to grow up in a world where men and women can freely talk about sexual assault, miscarriage, and death, and where she can be in an environment that we can all just recognize each other's pain and not give pat answers or try and explain things away, but we can just simply recognize that sometimes life just breaks your heart. Thank you.